Up next on The Amazing Art Show, Metalheads. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam. We've got a super cool project for you today. And we're going to be talking a little bit about an artist. He's a French contemporary artist. His name is, De and I'm going to butcher his name. It's French, but I'm going to do my best. Dejir Triglia. If you're watching, I'm real sorry. I did my best. Um, he is an awesome artist. You've got to go just Google him. Go look at his art. He does a bunch of recycling things that he just takes found objects and things like that and then turns them into these awesome, awesome pieces of art. And so today, our project that we're going to be um, working on is also going to, we're going to be kind of incorporating science and recycling and then, um, of course, definitely our art. And so you're going to need some weird things today. So let me kind of go into what you're going to need. Um, most simple thing that you're going to need is some kind of a cardboard. Um, I've got like one of mine is just a plain, just a plain piece of cardboard. So you could do something like that if you wanted to, um, but just something that's pretty heavy. All right, and then you are going to need all kinds of paint. You need um, like just plain acrylic paint that you can paint on, and then you also need the paint that you can. Um, it's like a three-dimensional kind of paint. And you could do sparkly, glittery, you could do, some of it puffs up, and you could do all kinds of fun stuff like that. Um, colored pencils, glue, possibly little scraps of cardboard, Sharpie markers, some found objects like I gathered up, um, like this film used to come in here for your camera. And so I had a ton of these just in the art room, and we're going to kind of use these as a stamping technique. And then, of course, you know, tons and tons of markers that no longer work. So we ripped off the lids, and so we can also kind of use those as a stamping tool. And then I also made, just with some cardboard, if I can get it in my hand, some little pieces of cardboard that I just kind of put together, and we're going to kind of use that to stamp as well. So kind of anything and everything. And then the most strange object that you're going to need is going to be some crushed cans, all right? And it doesn't matter particularly how you crush them, but I will say in doing this now a couple times, I think that it works better if when you crush it, like you step on one side of it and it makes the end of it come up and then you flip it over and you step on the other side and then it makes this side, fl this part flip in and then you just stomp on the whole thing and you just stomp it down and get it as flat as you possibly can. You can leave the little tab top on or you can take it off if you would like to and um, you want it just super flat. So if you want to, you could even like get the hammer, which is what I did. I took mine into my studio and just kind of banged it, banged it, banged it with my hammer a little bit more. Um, one thing that you need to be careful of is that because these are made out of a metal, that sometimes the metal will split and you will end up with very, very sharp pieces of metal. And so you want to just be real careful if you happen to run across that. And I've got a couple on all of my pieces, so I just was careful when I was working, you know, just to kind of be careful around that area because it will slice your finger open, so be really, really careful. All right, so I think that is just about it. And we're going to kind of be all over the road today. So jump on board and let's get going. All right, um, so you're going to have to, this is one of those projects that it's going to take you a lot longer to do it than what's going to be here on the show. So I've got stuff that's done in certain stages, but you're going to have to obviously take the time to do all of them, and it will take you much longer. Um, so first thing I want to start with, is your cardboard and all I want you to do on that cardboard is you are going to basically divide it into two planes. You want you know your foreground and you want your background. So something back here, something up here, you want two different colors. You want super, super bright and colorful. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. And then, um, and so I'm going to put that to the side and I actually put that in my artwork, which is not good. All right, so um, next thing we're going to do is you're going to get your can. And 
you know, sometimes when you crush them, they kind of end up making this interesting kind of shape. And so sometimes one will be more appealing than others. So you just kind of have to look at it and see, you know, is it speaking to you? And, oh, I forgot to tell you what we're making. We are making a very abstract little head out of your can. So I know you're looking at this and you're thinking, really? This is going to become a head, but it is. Um, so kind of think about this, and it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, you could turn it and do something different up here. This could be a hat or, you know, this could just be like a cyclops eye. I mean, you could get really super creative with this. Um, we're talking very abstract. Um, I like to turn them like this so that this becomes the mouth. And you could even make this like the tongue, all right? So you want to kind of get super creative and decide which way you would like to turn it, which, um, which shape kind of appeals to you the most. I like this one. I don't know. I'm having a hard time. I like that one because it's white, but I think I'm going to go with this one because I like the shape better. All right, so what you're going to need to do is there's a couple ways that you can go about this. If you want to get, like, super crazy with it and you want to change the color of the can behind it, you can use the acrylic paints and you can paint over it. But what I like to do and what our artists like to do is, um, you know, leave the can to where it, show, it shows. So, it, you know, you can tell that it's a can. It's, it's a recognizable thing. So kind of work around things that you might have on your can. Um, and you could even use that as part of a design element. So, um, all right, so here we go. I think I'm going to start out, and this is like there is no real science to this. It's just kind of crazy all over the road. Um, and I'm going to paint a little bit of mine first, and then I'm going to start doing the um, more of the slick paint and the three-dimensional paint. So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to paint inside here. And this will kind of be somewhat sheer. It's not going to cover super, super well, but it's going to get a color in there and it'll make it kind of have some unity. So I'm just going to paint all inside here with my paintbrush. And I'm just painting everything now. I may come back and make that part into a tongue. I have not done that yet. And I think that sounds like fun to me. So we're going to do that. All right. Now it's gonna, like I said, it's kind of transparent a little bit, but that's okay. And if you don't want it to be that transparent, you know, let it dry for a few minutes, work in another area, and then you can come back and do another coat of paint, and um, it'll be great, all right? Okay, so now I'm going to switch over, and I'm trying to decide what color I would like to do. And we're gonna start drawing on, with the slick paints, the three-dimensional paints, you're gonna start drawing on eyes and a nose, and I'm going to make this my mouth. It depends on where you want to make your mouth. Um, so I think, because when I did mine earlier, I started with the eyes. And I wish that I hadn't done that. So don't start on the eyes. Even I don't know. That's like my favorite place to start on things. So instead, start on the nose. And the nose, remember, we're not really going for realistic. So it can be pretty silly. And um, I'm going to see if this will squirt, squirt. And it's not looking good, people. Not looking good. Let's try this one. I know this one will squirt. I was using it earlier. OK. So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to do a shape that kind of comes all the way up. And this is going to be my nose. And so far, I'm drawing upside down, but I'm going to flip it around because I'm good, but I'm not that good. So I'm going to just do, you know, kind of a shape like that. And if I wanted to get super crazy with it, I definitely could, but I'm going to kind of leave it there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to come in and just put some stripes that kind of go across. This is heavily patterned, like crazy, insane, heavily patterned. All right, on to my favorite part, eyes. And um, hair, let me discuss that while I'm doing eyes. 
Um, your hair. If you want to, you could definitely do some hair on the can, but I'll show you mine in a minute. Instead, what I did is I ended up doing, um, I, I kind of drew the hair on later. And I didn't even draw it on my can. I drew it onto that poster board that we made earlier. My hand is very shaky and I'm very sorry. I've been doing some major art today and my hand is very tired. So bear with my shakiness. All right, so I've got the whites of my eyes and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do some green. You wanna make sure before you start squirting with these that you um, really shake them well. And you should probably also have a straight pin handy because sometimes they get kind of clogged. And you can kind of stick a little straight pin down in there and get it unclogged very quickly. And I'm gonna leave a place for the pupil. So right now I've got the white part of the eye, I've got the colored part or the iris, and I'm leaving a spot for me to come back in and do the pupil. And w this is also one of those things, sometimes because you're working with this wet of a, of a medium, sometimes you kind of have to work in areas and you kind of have to let parts of it dry and then you can come back and do more patterning and, and things like that. So, let's see, some black on here. My shaky hand. And you just kind of fill it in. It's really cool, it kind of is like icing to me. All right. And if you wanted to, you know, you could get real crazy with this and do like some eyelashes coming off of here. And like I was saying, this is really abstract. So, you know, you can go super crazy with this. This is so fun. It's like I can hardly stop doing it now that I've started. All right, so I'm gonna keep kind of going over these layers. And down on the mouth, you could, if you want to do another layer of paint, you can. Um, if you're cool with it like that, you can leave it like that. Um, I think, I've not tried this before, so this is completely experimental. But I'm gonna try to do, coming across here, like some teeth. So I'm just going to have them go across like that, and then I'm going to have some that go down. I'm even going to lift this up a little bit so I can get in there. And I got my fingers in the eyelashes. That's a no-no. All right. Um, and then I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to kind of fill in. I have nowhere to hang on to this. This is what I was talking about. You have to kind of think about where you're going to work and where your hands will need to be. And I get so excited, I'd kind of forget. You'll probably do the same thing. But the good news is, is that if you mess up an area, it's, you can just wipe it off. It's so easy to fix. It's very forgiving. All right, so I'm gonna kinda let that dry a little bit. I will eventually come back and I'm gonna do like some lines for the teeth. Um, now as far as, I talked to you about patterning and you can actually come back, like once these dry just a little bit, you can actually come back and you can do more colors on top of those colors. You can also come in, and that one's not working, but I can try this one. Um, you can also just do, you know, just some interesting kind of patterning that can go, you know, just kind of fill in areas that create some kind of a design element. And it doesn't have to make sense because it's very abstract. So you could have, you know, crazy unibrow, you could have, you know, all kinds of crazy things going on. 
All right, so I'm going to put this one to the side for a second. And I want to come back to your board here. Now, this is where you will eventually be gluing this, all right? So this is going to be the head, and now you need to create a little body for it, all right? So think about what you want your body to be doing. This is obviously a very abstract little man, so think about something fun that he would be doing. I mean, I don't really think he would just be sitting there very boring-like, so I think he's going to be doing something very fun and exciting. He could be playing an instrument, or he could be singing, or he could be dancing, he could be doing Zumba, I don't know. It's up to you. You get to decide. Um, I think I'm going to make my little man dance because the one I'm going to show you one in a second that I did the same thing. So with your pencil, what I want you to do is kind of, my board is somewhat small, so I'm going to move him closer to the top so that I have plenty of room to draw. You know, you can situate him more towards the side, whatever you want him to be doing, it's up to you. So kind of think of an interesting layout, and I'm going to have to turn mine because I can't draw upside down. And I left my little head there long enough for me to draw kind of two lines for the neck. And then once I did that, just because I was afraid I was going to mess it up, I moved it. So now I've got my, the starting point. And so you just basically think about what you want them to do. And these little fellas, I mean, can be really crazy. And even their body parts don't necessarily have to make a lot of sense. If it's kind of weird to you, it's probably a good idea for this project. And then you're just going to draw whatever you want the figure to be doing. And I'm trying to think what I want my figure to be doing. I want him to be doing the splits. No, I think I won't do that. I think his legs would run off my paper. Okay, I think I'll do, I'm going to have this leg kind of come down and kick up. And so there'll be a foot there, and it's going to go off the page. And then I'm going to do this one going out here. All right. He's doing some kind of a weird move. I don't know what it is. Okay, so now you kind of know where, what you're doing there. Um, you are going to use your paints and, um, you know, decide whatever color you want to make things, and you're just going to paint over your background to start creating your person's body. Now, I will tell you, and the reason why I did it this way is so I can kind of point this out to you. Because, depending on what colors you use, especially, um, you have to do usually like two, sometimes three coats of paint on here. Because, since we've already painted it one color, you know, underneath, the paints kind of, you know, they I don't know, it kind of shows through in a way. Like even this color as I'm painting it, it's kind of taking on this purplish kind of tint. So if you will do a couple of coats and you want to let them dry in between, because if you do them straight on top of one another while they're wet, it just kind of moves the paint all around and it doesn't accomplish what you want to accomplish. All right? So you're going to paint over, paint over, paint over until you get it the way you want it to look. And I will tell you right now, I accidentally made the mistake of I picked one that was a gloss. I didn't even know it was a gloss. It was like this. And um, because it was shiny on my lens, I had to do like five coats of it, and it's still kind of see-through-ish. All right, so I'm going to put that one to the side, and I'm going to grab this one and show you this one. Let me hold this one up. Get that out of the way. All right. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why my hand is shaky because I sat there drawing all of these little itty bitty circles that took me forever. And my hand is shaky because it's tired. Um, but how awesome do they look? I'm so excited about them, I can hardly stand myself. All right, so this kind of gives it away what we're starting to do now, all right? So I'm gonna flip this back around and we're gonna talk about kind of some other things you might wanna think about adding. Um, in this particular one, I made my little crazy man, and he's got little maracas, and he's shaking and dancing. All right, so, you know, kind of give them the basics with your flat paint, okay? That's the paint that's in the bottles that look like this, all right? 
and you're painting that on. Sometimes you have to do a couple coats. And then your more three-dimensional paints, the slick paints, is what you're going to come back and do a lot of detailing with. All right? Um, but before you start any of the detailing with these, you want to get out your um, 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 colored pencils. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and this, this is when you can do some other patterning in here. So like you might do something like circles or maybe you have another favorite shape of yours. Circles are my favorite. All right, and this is also where we are going to attempt to do some stamping. So I'm going to do my stamping up here. You might want to do stamping in both places. It just kind of, you know, whatever strikes you. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm going to try this one. And I'm not sure what color I want to do. I think I'm going to do this lighter blue. Shake it really good. And because I'm stamping, I want to give myself plenty. And I'm going to kind of stamp and then I'm going to kind of blot it off. And then I'm going to just carefully stamp. And this is just a little random strange shape that I just happened to come up with. There is really no rhyme or reason to it. If you're wondering like why I did that shape, <laughs> because that's what I just decided to do. So you would kind of fill in. And I kind of did mine backwards a little bit. And you could too. I mean, if you wanted to do it that way, you can too. But I did, I kind of painted some of my details, like the hair and things like that, before I did my, um, my stamping or my patterns. So now I'm just going to kind of work around what I have. And, you know, you want to kind of keep it consistent. Now, I've got this one that I made over here that's like a little heart, and I'm really kind of dying to use it. So I'm thinking I may try to fit it in here in a minute. All right, so I would keep kind of going here, and I'm going to go real quick. Don't do what I'm doing. Take your time. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because I want to try my other little one. All right, so I'm going to give me a little bit of paint. And here we go with this one. It's kind of shaped like a heart. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm going to really dip it in there good. And then I'm going to kind of stamp it off. I can kind of see it's got a low edge, so that's kind of good for me to know that. All right, here we go. I think I'm going to do it right here. And I've already got it on my finger. I'm going to put it down and just kind of roll it down. And then I want to kind of rock it. I already know that it was kind of low on this side that's closest to me. And then very carefully straight off. I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. OK, so I could continue and I could do some more of those. I can come in and add some other shapes inside there if I would like to. Um, but now, I think what I would like to do is I want to talk to you about these little crazy people that I put over here. These are just like some little extra details that you might want to consider thinking about adding to your picture. And now, once you've got that done, is when you can come in there and just like go super crazy with all of your patterning. So I already came in and I put something on top of this which wiped off this little guy's eyeball. And I'm going to cover up that little boo-boo. OK, so I've done, so far, I've done his shoes. And I've done um, these little guys over here. This is a great time to come in. And you can do all kinds of detailing. So you might want to outline around your figure. You know, maybe you want to do some kind of an interesting line that might go around your figures. I'm just kind of thinking of some interesting patterning that I can do. All right. So, you know, something like that. You want to give them some good depth. All right. And then 
we're going to talk about gluing the can on. All right, so I'm going to grab one that I have already done that's dry because it'll be a little bit easier to work with. Um, this is where you might, you might need mom or dad's help because you're going to need to use the hot glue gun. And so you're just going to flip it over on the back. And you can see on this one, I didn't use the side with the tab. I just used the other side and I made it the mouth. And um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this can over and with my glue gun, I'm going to give it some glue if it will come out. It's stuck. There we go. And I will warn you right now, this can will get really warm really fast. So you want to get it on there and then don't touch it for a minute or two because it's already hot. All right, so I'm going to go right there. And I'm going to kind of very carefully push it down. And you can see I added little um, ears on the edges, and then you can see his hair coming out off the top there. All right, let's go to today's art quote. Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Thomas Merton. Okay, um, one thing that I did not mention in the intro, but you might want to think about, and this, this thought kind of came to me last minute, was I had a bunch of toilet paper rolls at my school and I was like, what can I do with these? And I thought, well, how cute would it be to make like a little crown? So something that you might want to think about is, you know, recycling some of those other objects that you might have, you know, just that are laying around. So get super creative and think about, you know, some other things that you might want to recycle and that you might want to use. All right, so the last step that I want to kind of go over with you, I briefly touched on it before. This is where you're going to go in and you just kind of go pattern crazy. You're going to do patterns on everything. And even once you've done patterns on them, you can go back and do patterns on top of patterns on top of patterns because it's like, it's kind of one of those things, it's like the more the better. Um, so I've kind of gone in and kind of done what kind of looks like some stitching. And then, you know, you could even go back and kind of retrace. When I was painting my... Um, pants and things. I didn't get too particular about if it was exactly in the lines because I knew that I was going to be coming back and doing so much outlining that it probably wouldn't show a whole lot. So you might want to kind of, you know, think about, you know, that angle on if you want to go back and re-outline everything, think about what colors you might want to use. Um, on my maracas, I came in and I added all kinds of paint there. And, um, I was trying to think of an area, you know, kind of, a, you can kind of see it up here on the face. Like it's just patterns upon patterns upon patterns. It's kind of hard for me to continue doing my layering because a bunch of mine is wet. And that's a good point. You don't want to layer, you kind of have to let it dry. So you kind of do some stuff and then go up and work in another area and then come back and then work in another area. So let me show you, this is an example of one and it's a little, you can see, and it's kind of hard to see, especially on the camera, but you've just got, you've got stripes. And then up on top of stripes, you've got all these little dot details that go and outline around everything. You've got stripes on the bottom of the shoes. You've got this little dot pattern that kind of makes the laces on the shoes. So you've got like these little figures that we added, dots that go all the way around the figures, around their lips, around their eyes. So it's just like intense patterning. So when you think you're done, you're not done. You're going to keep going. As long as there's pain in here, you just keep patterning. Just kidding. You don't really have to do it that long, but it's going to be a lot. And you're going to think, ah, oh, what am I done with this? But I'm telling you, it's like one of those things, but be neat about it. Don't just glob it everywhere. All right. So be purposeful with your patterns. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Now go out and make some amazing recycling art.